Hey guys, and welcome back to another installment of my Rocket League mechanic series. Today, I wanted to bring you guys another episode of the series and figured it was about time I made a video on the most highly requested mechanic in all of Rocket League, and that is air dribbling. Now, obviously, air dribbling is the next step up after just ground dribbling, so if you're not comfortable dribbling on the ground yet, I highly suggest you check out my dribbling tutorial before you watch this. One last thing I have to mention before I get started though, is currently 98% of you all watching are not subscribed to the channel. So if you're part of that group, please consider subbing if you like this video. Anyways, without any further wait, let's talk about how to air dribble in Rocket League. Okay, before I get into the step-by-step -step of how to air dribble, I have to give you all a warning. Unlike a lot of the other mechanics guides I've made on the channel, air dribbling has a prerequisite, and that is aerial car control. In other words, before you start air dribbling, you must at the very least have a basic understanding of aerial car control in Rocket League. The reason I'm saying this is because if you try to air dribble a ball before you can even keep your car up on its own, you're gonna be putting the cart before the horse, and needless to say, you won't be going anywhere. So even if you think you have good aerial car control, I highly recommend that before you do anything with air dribbling, you start with my favorite car control drill, and that is Lethemir's Rings Map. In my opinion, if you can't complete the first 10 levels on this map, you shouldn't be air dribbling yet. Now that's not to say you can't try, but trust me, if you master Lethemir's Rings before you go headfirst diving into air dribbling, you're gonna learn the mechanic way faster in the long run. Anyways, that's just my warning, but for those of you who really want to air dribble, let's talk about the actual mechanic itself. Now air dribbling can be broken down into multiple parts, but the most important piece is at the start with the setup and then the subsequent first touch. Now your setup and first touch are everything with wall mechanics, especially as a beginner, because it's really hard to correct for a bad start. Not only that, but a good first touch is going to set you up for the rest of the air dribble, so you don't have to worry about wasting boost or doing any corrections later on to fix your mistakes. All right, but how do you get a good setup and first touch? Well, for starters, we'll use a training pack to help get the ball rolling for our initial setup. Once you're here, you'll have the speed and timing already set by the training pack, so all you really need to think about is the angle that you first hit the ball. Now, when you're starting out, the most important tip with hitting the ball off the wall is you want it to put you in a straight line to go opposite top corner from where you started. Now, unfortunately, the only real way to learn how to do this is with trial and error. But to make the most of your failures, every time you mess up the setup, you want to be thinking about what went wrong. Did you hit the ball too far away from the wall or too close? Did you hit it too high up or not high enough? Think about these things as you're repeating the shot, and soon enough, you'll understand the sweet spot you have to hit the ball to set yourself up for a perfect air dribble. Once you've got the setup down, the next and most important step of the whole air dribble is the first touch, and specifically, a soft first touch. It's incredibly important that you get a soft first touch, because if you hit the ball too hard, it will just fly off at the net, and there won't be any way for you to actually catch the ball and carry it in. Now to get a soft first touch, all you really need to do is make sure your car is moving slowly the moment before you hit the ball. The easiest way to do this is to stop boosting right before you hit the ball. But this is also why the setup is so important, because if you have to boost too much to catch up to the ball, canceling your boost at the last second won't really matter because you'll already be going too fast. Once again, a lot of this comes down to trial and error, so make sure when you're practicing this and inevitably messing up, you're taking note of what went wrong so you can be actively fixing your mistakes. From here though, after you've gotten a soft first touch, the last step of the air dribble is going to be the carry. If everything went right up until this point, the carry shouldn't really require you to make many adjustments to keep the ball going on target into your opponent's net. If you're having trouble with the carry though, the best tip I can give is to aim to score the ball above the net. This way, even if you lose control of the carry at the end, the ball will still be on track to be a difficult save for your opponent. Now even though the carry is probably the easiest part of the air dribble, there's still tons of room for improvement, and that's where this all comes back to the start with aerial car control. As you practice and get more comfortable controlling your car, you'll be able to carry the ball in different directions and really confuse your opponents. So like I said at the start, 
don't underestimate the importance of aerial car control, because how well you can control your car is going to directly affect your air dribbling abilities. One last thing I want to mention before I talk about my monthly giveaway though, is how to properly train air dribbling. Now there's no doubt air dribbling is going to take time to master, so to make the most of your time, I really suggest you don't allocate too much time to any one session. This is because if you practice too long, you're going to start to get lazy and not pay attention to your mistakes, which will leave you repeating the same errors over and over again, only making you frustrated in the long run. So to combat this, I highly recommend you limit your training sessions to at most 20 minutes at a time and really focus on locking in during that session. Trust me, even though it might seem the same, you'll improve much more doing six 20 minute sessions than you will in a single two hour long block. But all right guys, that is about going to wrap things up for this guide. I really stand by everything I said in this video, and hopefully it helps you all learn how to air dribble as fast as possible. But before the video ends, I wanted to talk about the monthly giveaway I do for those of you who are new here. So if you're new to the channel, at the end of every month, I pick a random commenter on my videos to be coached to GC by me. What this means is that if your comment gets picked, I'll coach you until you hit Grand Champion rank in Rocket League. So if you want to enter for a chance to win at that, all you have to do is leave a like and comment below with your rank in Rocket League. If you did find this video interesting, all I ask is that you leave a like and sub if you haven't already. That's all I've got though, so thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.